A photodiode is a PN junction light sensitive semiconductor device that, when exposed to radiation, produces an electrical current. It means a photodiode receives light as input and generates current as output. The function of a photodiode is the opposite of an LED. An LED is also a diode but makes light out of electricity. As you can see, two terminals protrude from the end of a photodiode. The cathode terminal is the diode's shorter end, whereas the anode terminal is the diode's longer end. It is worth mentioning that the terms light detector, photodetector, or photosensor are also used occasionally instead of photodiode. In addition, we need to be familiar with the photodiode symbol, so in case of dealing with circuit diagrams, we can recognize photodiodes. The photodiode symbol is nearly similar to the symbol of the PN junction diode, except that it includes two inward arrows representing light shining on a photodiode. This symbol also indicates the two terminals of a photodiode, cathode and anode. Now let us first consider what happens before we throw light on a photodiode. To do so, we need to see the inner structure of a photodiode. The photodiode has been especially designed to function in a reverse bias mode. What exactly is reverse biasing? It means the P side of a photodiode is linked to the power supply's negative terminal while the N side is connected to the positive terminal of the power supply. Since photodiodes are a class of diodes, we will begin by discussing the PN junction. As mentioned before, it has two terminals, anode and cathode. If you are familiar with diodes, you know that in a PN junction, the P region's majority carriers are holes and the N region majority carriers are electrons. Also, there is a space in between called the depletion region, which has no electrons or holes but only includes positive or donor ions and negative or acceptor ions. These ions create an electric field in the depletion region that serves as a barrier to prevent the diffusion of holes and electrons into one another. In other words, it prevents electrons or holes from passage over the junction. In the reverse biasing mode, the holes in the P region and the electrons in the N region are drawn toward the negative and positive terminals of the power supply respectively. So that's why the PN junction has a broad depletion region thus a wide barrier due to reverse bias. It's interesting to note that if we apply a higher reverse voltage, imagine the breakdown voltage is not reached, the depletion region becomes wider. However, this change is hardly discernible. Since the surface area becomes wider in this condition, the photodiode becomes more sensitive to light, but the frequency response slows down. And if in the case we surpass the breakdown voltage, the photodiode may be damaged. When the photodiode is under the reverse bias condition and in the absence of the instant light, only a minority reverse saturation current in the microampere goes through a photodiode, called the dark current. What is the cause of dark current flowing? Well, it's due to the movement of the thermally generated minority charge carriers in the P and N regions. For example, the negative side of the power supply pushes the electrons, the minority carriers in the P region, toward the PN junction. And because the P region's conduction band is more energetic than the N region's conduction band, the electrons can easily cross over the depletion region since no more energy is required. Before the photodiode is exposed to radiation, we should quickly recap the solids band theory. In typical circumstances, when electrons rotate around the nucleus in circular orbits, they have low energy and are only linked to the nucleus. These electrons are found in the valence band, which has the lowest energy. In the valence band, electrons can neither establish bonds with other atoms nor conduct current. It's time to shine light over the depletion region of the photodiode to see what happens. If incident photons have enough energy higher than this band gap, they can release electrons from the valence band and occupy them in the higher energy band called the conduction band. Thus, only electrons in the conduction band can transport current. Therefore, we can see a free electron and a free hole have been generated within the depletion region. We call this the electron hole pair. Now let us explore how these created electron hole pairs contribute to the current flow. Before they get the opportunity to recombine, since the built-in electric field exists in the depletion region, free electrons and holes will be attracted by the positive and negative ions. And due to their rapid drift velocity, they can pass across the depletion region. Because of the movement of this charge carrier, which is the result of throwing light, the electric current known as photocurrent is generated in the photodiode. 
If we shine brighter light, or in other words, increase the light intensity over the depletion region, it implies that more photons are absorbed. As a result, more electron hole pairs will be created, and thus the reverse current through the photodiode will also be increased. If photons absorption happens outside the depletion region, somewhere in the P or N regions, the generated electron hole pairs will be recombined in the material. Thus, no photocurrent will be produced in the photodiode. Just like every other equipment, the photodiode has pros and cons. The main advantages of using photodiodes are low noise, reasonable price, lightweight, small and compact, long lifespan, no need for high voltage, fastest photodetector, mechanical stress tolerant, and the output current has linearity as a function of incident light. The main disadvantages of using photodiodes are the need for external biasing, with a rise in temperature, the dark current increases, the active area is small, and the amplification is needed since the output is low. Finally, let us explore an application where the photodiode is used in an alarm system. Here we have a welding robot, and we do not want anyone to be present when the welding operation is going on since it may cause injury to the personnel. Also, a photodiode installed in the entryway receives illumination from a light source. Thus, as long as the light beam is not disrupted, the photocurrent will keep flowing. When someone walks through the door, the light beam is interrupted, and the photocurrent reduces to the dark current level. Therefore, the alarm system sends a signal to sound an alarm, which makes the person realize that he should not be in the environment during welding. What are other use of photodiodes in industrial automation or electronics? Please share your thoughts and experiences with us and the audience in the comment section. Also, please encourage us by liking the video, subscribing to our channel, and pressing the bell icon so you can get notifications whenever we publish new out-of-the-oven videos. This way you keep motivating us to produce more informative videos.